Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited to finally be diving into some Manor Lords here on the gaming channel. I actually was sent the code a couple of weeks ago for the game to be able to unlock it and start playing it, but I was in Gettysburg and then Italy, and I've just now been able to get onto the game and start playing a little bit. So I know I'm kind of behind many other content creators on YouTube and getting some uh, Mander Lords content up, but uh, we're going to start diving into it today, and we'll probably do at least a few episodes of this. Understand the game's going to change a lot. Uh, it hasn't even come out for early access yet. That comes out later this week. Uh, so there are a lot of features that aren't available yet or aren't fleshed out. So this is not what the final game is going to look like, but it's already a ton of fun. I've got about 20 hours into the game. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of show you some of the highlights and play through it a little bit. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So you start out by uh, picking your portrait, uh, choosing your name, designing your coat of arms. This is all really fun stuff. And uh, there's a lot of different options, but I'm keeping it pretty simple with my coat of arms here. And then we're going to dive right into getting our settlement started. There are a lot of these options that you can choose in setting up your game. Uh, there are three basic options as far as the the template for starting. Uh, you have Rise to Prosperity, which means you need to fulfill your requirements of your citizens, plan and rule your town as you see fit without having to worry about combat. But listen, let's face it, we all want to play the combat mode on this game. It's got a little taste of Total War to it, uh, but some really cool features and abilities to go along with it. Um, there's Restoring the Peace, which is kind of the default one and the one we're going to be playing. Two territories in the north are claimed by the illegitimate Baron, whose castle is located off the map. So there's no AI settlement to attack. Uh, there will just be armies that you're going to fight as you slowly conquer the various territories on your small map to start. There's also some bandits and things like that that you can deal with. And the victory condition here is just to conquer every region on the map. And then there's On the Edge, which is kind of more of a survival mode uh, that's a little more challenging. And then within each of these, you have different things that you can tweak. So I'm not going to go too much into this. We're just going to go with the default settings for everything uh, as it is uh, with Restoring the Peace. So uh, things kind of randomly spawn each time you play. So um, when you take a look at your starting region, sometimes you could be down in the corner. Sometimes you could be in the middle. In this case, we are down here in the left corner, and these are all the different areas that eventually we're going to be able to take over. And each one of these areas has, you see these little crowns. Those are the resources that are going to be rich in that particular area, and they're going to vary from uh, each one and makes each gameplay experience a little different. Uh, so in this case, wild animals and berries are going to be our rich resources, which actually isn't so bad because... That means that we're going to be rich in terms of our sources of food right away. But that does mean we're not going to have as much stone, clay, iron, things like that. Which means those are going to have to be imported or taken in other regions. Thankfully, the next region over is rich in stone and iron. So that might come in handy long term. Uh, the other thing we want to look at then is uh, the fertility for growing crops. And we've got a nice area of fertility here. Uh, right in the center uh, and if eventually once we unlock rye that'll come in really handy for us right there uh, so when I say unlock there are these development points you're going to be able to spend and I have to use these wisely because you don't get many of them uh, but there's some really cool features you can get with some of these and uh, one way you can go is with trade you get better deals here this dramatically reduces the cost of importing goods. I mean, we're talking about like maybe 20% of the cost that they are once you unlock this. So I usually, in my test runs, have been going for that first because it makes a huge difference in terms of your trade costs. Um, but also you could go forest management uh, to you know, double your berry deposits, things like that. There's trapping, orchards, eventually you wanna unlock things like sheep breeding. Here's rye cultivation. So you have to put at least two points into this one in order to be able to get that, which is pretty helpful as well. Uh, so a lot of difficult choices to be made about how you play the game. But the main thing early on is that we need to grow our settlement. We need enough people to work the various things we need. We're going to need firewood and food. We're going to need uh, to keep people's happiness up because the way you get people to move in is you're above 50% approval. 
and that's going to get you one family per month if you're there. I think if you're above like 75, 80%, you get two families a month moving in. So uh, there's a lot to be done here uh, and a lot to have to deal uh, to kind of consider in doing all of this. So the first thing I need to make sure I'm dealing with is I need a logging camp so that uh, we're going to be regularly producing the logs that we're going to need to be able to build everything else. So uh, we're going to queue that up first. And we're going to make that our highest priority. As long as we uh, get po folks into homes as quickly as we can, we'll be in good shape. Um, right now we have ten or we have five families. Uh, which means in order to get new people to move in, we're going to need to have at least one extra uh, home site on top of the five that we need for the families we already have. So we want to at least probably have about seven of these. And the earlier we do that and get our approval to stay above 50%, the quicker we can start gaining new families. Uh, so I'm going to think about a place to do that right off the bat here. I think we'll throw a road in right here. And then we'll bring a crossroad down this way. And that'll kind of get us started. We're also going to want to deal with food right away. So let's place our um, forager right up here near where the berries are going to be. And those are going to grow uh, as we get into the spring. Uh, so there'll be plenty of those to gather. We also want to get a hunting camp going and we want to put that... Um, probably a little more over this way toward where the wild animals are so they don't have as far to go. Uh, and then let's connect everything by road the best we can. Of course, one of the things I absolutely love about this game is how you can really get a sense of exactly what's happening. And you can zoom all the way down. And you can actually, there's a mode on this game, and I'll show it to you later on, where you actually can take control of your uh, your lord that you're playing as and walk around the town. It's pretty cool. You can see each of these individuals. They all have names and identities. Uh, so they're waiting right now because in order to build this structure, we need two pieces of timber. And timber can only be transported uh, using our oxen and we only start with uh, one of those I think I can't remember if it's one or two but uh, let's go over here and take a look and see where that's at there they are right there so he's got to come over here with this thing and hook it up and drag it over there so the sooner we get more of those the better because we're going to need those to move our supplies around there you go so I just love the, the little attention to detail it makes the immersion into the game a little better uh, so here I'll, I'll just show you what this looks like walking around there's not really much to see right now but here we are watching as they're dragging the piece of timber whoa almost hit me with that there buddy but it just it feels so real this way I, I really really do appreciate that so then once these uh, buildings are, are completed then we need to assign workers to them uh, we're gonna only start with one for this because uh, we only have five workers available at the moment, and we're going to need every single one of them for the jobs that we have. And we always need to keep at least one unassigned in order to do construction. Uh, so now that we've built that, he's going to start producing timber. Uh, we're going to also need a person to work our forager hut to start collecting food, somebody to work our hunting. So that's going to leave us with only two. And then with those two, we've got to start building our homes. Uh, so... I'll go ahead and start queuing those up, but first we want to make our forager hut and our our hunting area higher priority so that those get constructed first. So let's go ahead and go to residential now. Uh, so these plots, uh, you lay them out. And you can lay out several at once. And the bigger you make them, the more features are available. So... Um, for example, right there you see that we could build four of them. We don't have enough goods. Uh, we only have six timber right now. So we actually need to go with a max of three. 
Uh, in this case, we'll just do two here. Uh, and this allows us uh, with this to also add on to it. So we can build like a vegetable garden or we can make a chicken coop, which means they're going to start producing a little bit of food on their own. And as we level those up, they could have a, a blacksmith shop at their home or they could have a cobbler. Uh, and you'll see all of that as we go along. Uh, if we make these plots a little bigger, you have the option to add on to the plot and then you can have two families living in the same plot. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do this. And then as we get more timber, we'll be able to do more. And remember, we need at least five of these just to house the families we already have. We need at least six if we want to start getting new families to move in. The other thing we need to do is we need a market area because that's where these families that are producing uh, the goods that are needed for our town to, to function, uh, they need a place to be able to sell those. Uh, and why that matters uh, where we put it is because the, uh, the homesteads that are closest to the market are going to get those resources first. So they're going to be the ones that uh, it, it's going to be easier to upgrade because they're going to have best availability of resources. Uh, so I may actually try to put the market in the center uh, so that they're all around it. I've never tried that before in building. Uh, so that's something new I may try here. Uh, so let's go ahead and put roads right here. And then I think we'll do the market somewhere kind of in the center of all of that. We'll see how it works. So uh, we we'll basically just block off an area for marketplace. And then however big the area is, that's how many markets are going to market stalls are going to be able to fit in there. OK, so we've got the five we need to house everybody. Uh, which means now the homelessness problem that's hurting our uh, approval rating is going to slowly go away, and that's going to eke over 50%. And once it's over 50% and we have available places, we'll start getting new families moving in, which is ideal for us right now as we get started. Uh, so we've got our first development point available to us. And there's a few different options as far as how I could go with this, but... Uh, like I said, I really think I want to get that uh, better deals on trade as quickly as I can. Uh, so we're going to go as quickly as we can to do that. We'll talk more about trade as we get into that. But right now, I've got 50 in regional wealth. That's kind of my currency that I can buy and sell with. And we can use that to upgrade these plots. And right now, early on, the main thing is getting as many different sources of food as I can. Uh, until we can start building farms. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do some chicken coops and some vegetable gardens to get started. Now we've already spent as much as we have, so we're going to have to make some money by selling things uh, in order to get more. So as it stands, we have enough food for 16 months, but that's based on the number of people we currently have. We have fuel for three months, and fuel is the other thing we have to worry about. Uh, early on is kind of some of the basic needs. If you click on one of these, you're going to see at level one uh, what their basic amenities are. We haven't built a well yet, so we need to do that as well. Um, let's go ahead and build a well, and you can see where the water is. So we just have to build it in one of those areas uh, where where water is accessible. So I guess we'll go just right there is fine. Um, so we'll get that. Water access, a church eventually we'll need to build, but we can't build a church until we have a sawmill. Uh, we're going to need at least enough fuel available in a market stall, at least two different types of food available, and then clothing as well. Once we have all of those needs met, uh, then we can upgrade to level two, and that's going to uh, give us a bunch of new options as well. And then you can see the armaments. Uh, eventually we're going to want to build an army, and you can form footmen, Spear Militia, Pole Arm Militia, Archer Militia, and then you can also have a Retinue. That's all down the road for us right now. Uh, right now, we just need to get people. Uh, I definitely want to get uh, the production of firewood going, uh, so that's under gathering. Uh, so we'll get a woodcutter going, and of course, we're going to need to replace the trees that we're taking for all of this at some point as well. So uh, we'll put our woodcutter right over here for the time being. So like I said, part of the fun for me is watching things unfold. So uh, our workers have gone and begun the process of building where the woodcutter's hut will be. Uh, there's not a lot they can do until the, the logs get here, which is the main thing. There goes our hunter. 
walking by. Here comes the first log got dropped off. But I just want it for a second. Why do I have to carry this? And when you go in, you can actually listen to them talk and they'll complain about things. It's great. Oh, this is heavier than it looks. Just love the little attention to detail like that. And yeah, um, eventually what we're going to want to do is we're going to have... We're going to want to build um, a granary and then a storage shed. And we're going to assign workers to those. And that's going to streamline things as far as getting resources from point A to point B. So they don't stock up uh, and kind of get full. Like right now you see we've got 49 berries at the forager hut. We don't want them at the forager hut. We want them accessible to the people. Uh, but it's harder to do that when the person who's foraging also has to transport it. So eventually we want to have people who are going to do that transportation for us. We're going to want to get more horses and oxen so we can do that quicker. Uh, looks like bandits just stole eight of our tools. And tools are hard to come by. That means we're down to just two of them. So we're going to have to deal with those bandits at some point. Let's take a look and see if we can see on the map where the bandits are. I don't see them at the moment, but eventually you, you will spot them, uh, and then you can send an army to go deal with them. But we don't have either at the moment. So here's a good example of a slightly bigger plot that's going to allow for us to add a second family dwelling on it once it's built. Uh, so that's almost like building two. It just doesn't give us the option to have two add-ons to it. It'll only have one. So it's kind of a happy medium between the two. Uh, see, exposed stocks are getting soaked. Uh, so our supplies are starting to get wet because we have not yet built a place to store those. Uh, so even though I don't have the people to man these facilities yet, we do need to start thinking about uh, a storehouse and a granary uh, in order to, to place our items that we want to be able to store. So on the default settings, uh, once you get to a certain point, you get an armament delivery, which allows you to set up your first militia. Um, so we're going to set them up and it's always uh, spears. So we get 20 spears and 20 shields. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set up our spear militia to start. That uh, allows us to have 10 of them in that so far. Eventually it'll grow. Uh, I also do want to, I want to change the name of our settlement. My family came from a little uh, place called Tipton in England. So that's what we're going to call it. Our approval is now at 51%. You see it's green now. That means that once a month we're going to get a new family that moves in as long as we have a place for them. Uh, and you can see here right now we have living space for seven families. Plus one means we have one that we're in the process of building. We currently have five families. So once we add this one and then we do the add-on for it, we'll actually have room for eight families. So we always want to stay a couple of steps ahead of where we are uh, so that we always have the potential for new families to move in, provided we have the food to feed them. And right now that's not an issue. We have 15 months of food. Uh, so we really just need the bodies because there's a lot of things I'd like to build, but I don't have the people to man them yet. I've gone ahead and assigned my free worker, since I'm not building anything at the moment, to the granary. And you'll see that he's going to start going to pick up all of that extra, all those extra berries that are uh, just chilling in our forager hut right now uh, to bring them over here so they'll be more accessible. Uh, also, you see, we just got a notification uh, that... A bandit camp was sighted. That's the camp I was looking for earlier, but couldn't find. So now we know where it is. Uh, so now, once we feel strong enough, we could actually send our army across there, our militia, to go deal with that bandit camp so they won't keep stealing stuff from us. Uh, but I don't feel like we're at the place where we want to take them on quite yet. We can zoom in and look at them. They're all training for war right now. So I want to build up my militia a little bit more or get some money to where we can hire mercenaries to go deal with them. So the next thing we need is a tannery. Uh, that's going to allow us to turn the hides that our hunter is creating into um, leather for clothing. And we don't want the tannery because tanneries tend to smell. Uh, I don't think smell is a thing yet, but eventually it will be in the game. Um, we need a free worker to be able to build that. Uh, but that's going to give us another needed resource in order to keep our people happy. We should, now that we're up to 54%, we should start to see new families moving in here, hopefully very soon. 
We got our family moving in, our first new family, so that gives us another worker. Every time a new family moves in, we add one worker. But we're feeding an entire family, so... I'm zooming in here because... Oh, there comes another. No, that's the same one. They just moved into where they were. Uh, I want to watch this tannery be constructed. They're, they're bringing the needed resources right now. And once they do that, people will come and start doing the work. And I'm going to come down here and get a kind of ground level view of it as it happens. Hello. How are you? Good? Good. Our workers have arrived. Let's watch them do the work. I will oversee it like a good lord that I am. Good job. Good job, everybody. Looking good. Cough doesn't sound good. You might want to get checked out. He just walked right through the wall. Just give me a hammer and something needs to not move. I'll put it in its place. I don't know. I just I I appreciate little things like watching it come together. I guess they're done for the day. Hey, get back here, peasants. Finish the building. Oh well. Okay, our tannery is complete. Let's go ahead and assign a worker to that. Uh, something else we want to think about long term is uh, what can we produce in numbers sufficient to sell for a profit that we can use to import things that we don't produce. Uh, and one of those for us would be dyes because we have this berry, this rich berry deposit uh, and dyes are made from berries. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. Now here's the thing. If you oversell like if you saturate the market by selling a ton of something it drives the price down just like in real life so we have to be careful of that that we're not just constantly selling a bunch of dyes because eventually it just won't be profitable the other thing i need then is i need a trading post and we can pretty much build that anywhere so let's throw it over here because uh, that's how we're going to be able to start selling goods and we need more regional wealth so we can do the add-ons to some of these other properties that we're going to need long term and uh, for next year we're going to have to think about farming as well we have our trading post built so now you can start to see uh, so just uh, by way of example you can see here that hides uh, I can sell them for four but it costs 14 to buy them and the reason that it costs that much more is because you are paying 10 uh, as the tariff and that's where this comes into play because once we get better deals, we reduce, uh, we remove the tariff on foreign imports, which means it reduces that cost by 10. So now we are buying them for four instead of 14. Uh, so you can see how massive that is early game when you're trying to import things that you need. The only thing we can really trade right now that we have in any sort of abundance are berries. And you really, you got to be careful, man, because you don't want to, like, go and selling off all your food early on. Some things it says it requires a trade route, uh, which means you have to pay kind of a premium to establish that trade route, which means that, that when that merchant comes in, he's only going to buy and sell that item, not any item. Uh, so those are dedicated trade routes. So we've wrapped up our first year in game. Uh, I've now got a dyer's workshop going. They're going to take the berries that we collect right here, uh, which are just starting to grow, and they're going to turn them into dye, which we can then use or sell uh, with our trading post. Uh, we've got our tannery. We've got our work woodcutter's lodge. We're going to need a forester. That's going to be a priority in year two. Uh, we're going to continue to grow. We're going to have to continue to stay on top of food needs. Right now we have 10 families. Uh, that are level one families. We're going to get a church built very soon here in year two. Uh, we need, let's see, we've got 29 timber and 10 planks. We need 20 planks to build the church. So once we produce those over here in our saw pit, we'll be able to build the church, and then we can start leveling these up uh, to plot level two. Uh, our storehouse has a worker, and he's kind of handling all of that stuff. And then we're going to have to start thinking about building up our militia a little bit. Once we get some level 2 plots, we can uh, start using them to produce things like bows uh, for archers uh, or armor and things like that. Uh, we'll start collecting clay. 
at the clay deposit, we'll, we'll put a stone uh, mining facility here, iron deposit there. Uh, but none, none of those are going to really produce a lot for us. So all of that will come in the next episode uh, for year two. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions, anything you'd like me to show in game, I'll be glad to do that. Just let me know in the comments. We'll see you again tomorrow with the next episode. Thanks for watching.